Hello Soul Tribe, hello Soul Family, welcome, welcome to this channel where we heal and integrate because consciousness is the new frontier. We are healing, removing distorted perceptions from our psyche. We are integrating, remembering the truth of who we are and who we are is the divine human spirit connected to God, connected to each other, connected to life, connected to all that is welcome welcome i'm so excited about this whole narcissism series that i'm doing now because my guys have been urging me for a long time you know over and above a whole lot of other things that they keep urging me to do and it's like oh spirit is just a whole lot and you know i'm, I'm i just keep asking them to just help me with you know the strength the resources and everything that's required for me to be able to do whatever it is that they want me to do as effectively as possible so um I'm excited about this because, you know, uh, to toxic relationships, narcissism, um, those are the things that I focused on massively in my initiation or during my initiation. So now, um, today we're going to be talking about 10 signs of a toxic relationship. Uh, but before we do that, it's actually 12 signs. I had written 10 signs, but it's actually 12 signs. Before we do that, let me uh, continue to explain again what's been happening uh, with me and um, with this whole series of narcissism and toxic relationships. It's not something that I'm going to spend. Um, I, I don't believe I'm going to be spending the rest of my life, you know, focusing on. I don't know, you know, uh, I might end up doing it because it's been a big, big topic in my initiation as i said um but let's see how you know things progress let's see which direction the guides lead me um but my guides have been urging me to do this one because it's very important to understand the spiritual nature of toxicity and toxic relationships emotional abuse and narcissistic abuse all right and even just dark personalities in general it's very important to understand the spiritual aspect of these things because when we don't understand the spiritual side of these things and just merely consider them as just you know it's just things it's just human beings it's just this it's just that we miss out on a massive opportunity to heal ourselves fully as we ought to and to also heal the world at large um, you know, our world has normalized toxicity so much that um, no one bats an eyelid whenever it is that anything that has to do with toxicity is mentioned. No one bats an eyelid anymore. Uh, people, you know, consider these things to just be normal. And so as a result of the normalization of toxicity, many women find themselves in very abusive relationships. I know I certainly have. And so they remain there for a very long time. And many people die in such kind of relationships because what you don't know is that um, a toxic relationship corrodes your system to an extent where your health deteriorates to a point where you might end up dying. And many women have died, um, some for, from unknown causes, some from you know your known typical ailments, such as you know high blood pressure, you know, um, ulcers, um, uh, cancers, and, you know, arthritis, and a whole lot of things like that. And the thing about this, the sinister nature of toxicity and uh, emotional abuse, uh, or narcissistic abuse, um, is that many a times the things, the, the, the damage that they cause in the victim's life are not able to be traced back to the abuse or the abuser. For example, when a person has cancer or when a person has some kind of a strange illness, many a times people are not able to connect that to the fact that this person might actually be enduring abuse. And as such, many people end up dying. And this is one of the reasons why my guides were actually urging me. There are many reasons why my guides have been urging me to do this. Um, and it, it's really sad. It's really, I've seen many women die you know, from uh, having dealt with toxic people in their lives. Because the thing about toxicity is this, it doesn't wear a label on its forehead to say, hi, I'm toxicity and I'm here to destroy you. 
Rather, what toxicity does is that it, you know, usually comes as a wolf in sheep's clothing. It comes as a messenger of light. It usually presents itself as your knight in shining armor. It presents itself as this wonderful loving friend that is just, you know, here to be your BFF for life or whatever. Sometimes it's your relative. Sometimes it's someone that you've given birth to. Sometimes it's your partner in business or someone that you work for or someone that works for you. Uh, toxicity is literally everywhere right now. And as long as we don't you know, begin to see it for what it is and begin to rearrange ourselves and our lives with regards to that level of awareness of what toxicity is, it's just going to continue to do what it's been doing all along. And we as human beings are going to continue to claim powerlessness against it. All right. And so it is my hope that, you know, with sharing in sharing this information, more and more people will be begin to become aware and will begin to, you know, make uh, take different decisions for themselves. And especially in the context of relationships, because majority of people who are toxic are men. Yes, women can be toxic as well. And women mostly, especially if they are unhealed, are toxic as well. But majority of the time when we're dealing with toxic people these are men so as long as there are people that are willing to put up with toxicity then there is no incentive for toxic people to change there is no incentive for them to begin to question their behavior because there's always someone who's enabling them and who's enabling their toxicity all right um and i'm gonna do another video uh you know as we go along in as part of the series that speaks to how the african culture has actually bred and i don't know exactly where this african culture comes from because you know sometimes when i look into it a little bit i note that um it might not necessarily be real african culture it might just be a hijack of the african culture that perpetuates toxicity that um really really you know incentivizes and supports and celebrates toxicity in men and so i'll do a video about that but um now toxicity in relationships is you know one of the, the this is my belief it's one of the leading causes to a lot of problems that we are having in society i'm going to do another video on that and then you will understand so stay tuned to this channel right so let's talk about um 10 signs of a toxic relationship okay i'm going to also be linking a whole lot of channels uh, at the bottom of this video in the description box channels where i've watched videos i have um you know watched interviews by a few people that went through toxic relationship situations um very abusive you know relationships emotionally abusive relationships right and then i i also you know watched videos by um people who specialize in you know professionals mental health professionals who specialize in narcissistic abuse and uh, things like that and just general mental health and so i'll link some of those uh, uh videos in the description box so that you can perhaps have a look yourself i wanted to you know get a gist of what's happening out there with regards to this particular topic uh before uh, you know what other youtubers are basically saying uh, before i did the video myself because um yeah it's a thing and you know the most interesting thing about this is that both uh, dr ramani and um this other doctor i forgot his name but i'm uh, is going to be linked in the description box right so they say that majority of toxic relationships you know are actually as a result of uh, one of the partners being narcissistic or being a narcissist so basically one of the partners has this thing called narcissistic personality disorder uh, or you know they've got a, a a personality disorder in general maybe they are a social a sociopath or a psychopath but typically a toxic when you are dealing with a toxic relationship one of the partners there has a personality disorder once again i'm a spiritual practitioner i'm not a psychologist so i'm also i'm always approaching these things from a 
spiritual perspective. But because I'm a psycho-spiritual practitioner, many a times a lot of the concepts that I apply, that I use, and a lot of my material as well, you know, and a lot of people that I watch and listen to and follow, and, you know, those people are mental health professionals themselves all right but understand this i'm a spiritual practitioner and so i'm not a mental health professional okay so um yeah what i was saying there is that when you are dealing with a toxic relationship you are likely dealing with a dark personality there's typically someone there who is um who has a personality disorder who is abusive who is a, the toxic one and the other one is a victim of course the one that is a victim is still toxic you know they still has their own toxicity and all of that but the difference between the two of them is that one is not prepared to you know self-reflect have any form of accountability or to actually consider the best interest of the other person whereas the other person as much as they may have their own toxicity and a whole lot of things like that they have the best interest of their partner at at, uh, at heart they are con you know in, in concerned about their partner they take them into consideration before they make decisions and they are willing to take up accountability for their behavior and they're even willing to work on the relationship so that the relationship can uh, enter into a healthy state all right so those are the two uh, differences between um you know the toxic person in a relationship and the other one who's simply a victim so the victim is not perfect but they are still a victim you understand and so um here when we are talking about a toxic relationship we are of course also going to be focusing on a romantic relationship all right so let's dive right into it and talk about 12 signs of a toxic relationship the first sign is it progresses very fast, okay? So you meet this person today, tomorrow they are telling you how that you are their whole world, where have you been their whole life, you know, and the two of you are spending so much time together, you are calling each other the whole day, you know, you speak for hours on the phone and, and so forth. And yeah, another video that I watched is Derek Jackson's ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife interview where she was narrating the story of what has happened in her relationship how the relationship with Derek Jackson started and how um, it ended I'll be using her as an example or their relationship as an example okay the very interesting thing about the dynamic of toxicity in relationships and you know emotional abuse is that many of the women who speak out about their experiences it sounds as if they were you know in a relationship with the same person majority of their stories are the same it's it's so scary it, it's like what is this groundhog day or what how is it possible that you know all these women could be dating the same men just with a different pair of pants and the interesting thing as well about this whole dynamic of toxicity is that um half the time even if you are one person i've seen it in my own personal life as well um when you move away from a toxic relationship and you enter into a new relationship many a times especially if you have not done the healing work or you have not completely healed and then you jump into another relationship half the time you will be dating the same person in a different pair of pants as well it's like one person could be dating the same person five times in a different pair of pants all right and that's just that whole thing about this um, phenomenon of uh, toxicity and toxic men and uh, dark personalities in men and emotional abuse so prevalent that something needs to be done because someone is going to have to stop the dynamic someone is going to have to put an end to it someone is going to have to say no at some point because if no one is putting an end to it no one is saying no to it you know there isn't going to be any incentive for toxic people to change there isn't going to be any incentive for them to want to do anything different they are not going to see themselves as you know uh being wrong in anything of their in any of the toxicity that they're actually engaging in okay so um let's let's go back to sign number one progresses very fast the relationship progresses very very fast okay so you've known each other for only two weeks or a week 
and this person you know is telling you that you are their soulmate or you are the best thing that they've ever come across since sliced bread <laughs> and then um you know the two of you are spending too much time together perhaps they are proposing within a week of getting to know you you know they are telling you you are the best thing in the world you are better than all their exes you, you are what they've been looking for the whole time you understand i know i've said that to certain a certain person in my one person i've said that to them but even you know with that being the case any healthy person can still say that you know um but this is something that typically uh toxic people will say and you, when they say this they are saying this to give you a false sense of connection and the reason why it has to happen so fast is so that you don't get enough chance to reflect on what is really going on to see that you are actually being love bombed okay that's that concept that has to do with narcissism but toxic people they love bomb and of course not every toxic person is a narcissist but most of the time majority of the time if you are dealing with a toxic person you are typically dealing with a narcissist or you are dealing with someone with some kind of a personality disorder all right a toxic person cannot be a, a healthy person a toxic person is someone that has a whole lot of wounds and they need to sort themselves out before trying to get into a relationship okay um and so here's the thing people who are just normal good people can still be toxic and they can still have a whole lot of wounds all right and they might still need to work on themselves before getting into a relationship but here we are talking about toxic people okay so um they love bomb you because they need to make sure that they secure you as narcissistic supply as quickly as possible they need to get you addicted to them as quickly as possible they need to get you to be so infatuated with them so attached to them so connected to them so you know mesmerized by them very very quickly so that you don't get an opportunity to slip away to slip out of their clutches you understand because when we talk about narcissistic supply even though the mental health profession has their own explanation about it from a spiritual perspective that's literally energy vampirism all right and what that is is that this person cannot be a self generating force so they need you in their life to suck the life out of you okay and so of course if you have enough time in between your interactions with this person to be able to reflect and see a whole lot of red flags that you need to see and to be aware of then you'll be able to step back so the toxic person needs to prevent you from doing that they need to make sure that at all costs they avoid the possibility of you catching on to who they are that you are really dealing with a shallow human being here that's not here to love or connect with you but they are simply here to still kill and destroy all right and so that's why the relationship has to progress very very fast and this is something that Denea Jackson also mentioned in her interview that um you know they used to spend hours and hours on the phone um she and her partner um Derek Jackson you know th in those first few days uh of them getting to know each other all right saying all sorts of wonderful things to each other and yeah she's thinking oh this is my soulmate this is my happily ever after this is my knight in shining armor because those are the you know things that you will begin to think when you find yourself experiencing this level of connection with another human being because it's like oh my god they are so sweet they are so gentle they are doting on me they are giving me so much attention you know they are doing all sorts of wonderful things for for you i mean in every narcissistic relationship i've ever been in one of the things that i saw very clearly was how that the person would be so self sacrificing for me you know in the beginning of the relationship the person will be i mean they'll be doing a whole lot of flamboyant acts of love you know to show me that they actually love me they'll be doing things they'll be doing the things for me you know a whole lot of bombastic romantic gestures that they will be doing and whatever it is that they'll be doing you can see you know when you look back in hindsight that this person made sure that you were aware of every sacrifice they were making for you 
so that you can then begin to think, oh my God, they must love me. They must love me because, oh, look, if he didn't love me, he wouldn't be doing that. And of course, in this world that we are living in of, um, you know, toxic masculinity, um, I mean, both men and women, you know, they support toxic masculinity, which is what I'll be tackling in that video when I'll be talking about the African culture. And so many a times, you know, when a person comes into your life and starts buying you a whole lot of gifts and wines and dines you and takes you to holiday destinations and a whole lot of things like that, you know, if you tell your friend or someone in your life about it, they'll say, oh, he must love you. And then they'll be telling you, don't do anything to mess this up. And now that puts so much pressure on you such that it's like if anything goes wrong, you're going to feel like it's your fault because this is clearly a perfect human being. Because if he wasn't perfect, he wouldn't be whining and dining you, right? That's that superficial nature of our society, right? That's that um, that whole normalization of toxicity because it's like it doesn't matter, you know, how this person treats you for real. You know, all that matters is the fact that they are actually, you know, whining and dining you all sorts of over the top romantic gestures, okay, towards you. Sign number two, the relationship is based on superficial reasons. Now, this person, of course, is telling you that, uh, you know, they love you, but when you dig into it, and maybe even if you ask the person, then it will become very clear that the person is only interested in you for very superficial reasons. I remember Danea Jackson said that um, Derek Jackson said to her that, you know, she loves, he loves her eyes, right? <laughs> he loves that, he loves her brain. You know, he loves the fact that she's so smart, you know? And many a times when you are not yet integrated as a person and, you know, you, you have not yet understood who you are, um, you do actually derive some sense of self-esteem from those kind of things. You know, the fact that you are maybe a brainiac, maybe you are intelligent, maybe you're a bookworm, maybe you're a nerd or whatever. And then if someone is complimenting you on that, it's like, oh, they must be loving me because they are seeing this aspect about me and they love me, you know. And maybe if you uh, derive yourself, your sense of self-esteem from your looks and the person is complimenting you and saying, you know, you look so beautiful, you know, you look good for me. We are a perfect fit for each other. We look good together. You know, we could be a, a power couple. Those kind of things become the things that you actually uh, find yourself, um, you know, uh, being fooled by. You know, you buy into that. You buy into those things that, oh, okay, then it means he loves me. You understand? Because you hadn't, you haven't yet come to a point where you actually understand that when a person really loves you, they, they love your character as a person and they love that character because they know that character. And of course, you can only know that character when you've spent enough time with the person, right? You know, you like the fact that this is a kind human being. You like the fact that they like animals, you know? You like the fact that, um, you know, th their values are aligned to yours and they've got this particular set of values that you admire in them. You know, that's true. That's love. You know, and of course, I mean, um, toxic people will be hearing this kind of things that I'm saying now and the poor women out there in the world will be hearing that, you know, I, I love your values. I love the fact that you love animals. I like the fact that you are so kind. Here's the thing. Don't buy into what a person is saying. Buy into who the person is showing themselves to be to you with their behavior over a, a period of time you understand. Um, that's how you get to know who a person is. You know, don't just buy into what a person is saying because toxic people are smooth talkers. They are such smooth talkers. It's, it's not even funny. It's almost as if they go to the school of smooth talking, you know, and it's so interesting because I just watched a video by Credo Mutua right now, um, just before I, I, I recorded this video. And, you know, he talks of reptilians. Okay. And here's the thing. The thing about toxic people is that they're very, and here we're talking about those dark personalities type of people, your narcissists and uh, sociopaths and psychopaths, right? Uh, they are very, uh, they operate like snakes in the grass, right? Like they are very sneaky, very sly, all right? And they are very smooth 
in their conduct as well, in their toxicity as well, right? And so Credo Mutua was saying something very interesting. He says that, um, you know, this reptilian uh, species of aliens um, are called Chitauri. And actually what the word Chitauri means is, you know, people who talk, you know, people who talk a lot. So in when I was listening to him saying that, I'm thinking this, and of course they are very snake-like type of, because they are reptilian, right? So I'm thinking, oh, he's, he's, what he's saying is that they are smooth talkers, basically. That's what they are. And um, it's so interesting, very, very interesting how that, you know, there are so many uh, similarities between dark personalities and this reptilian alien species as well. And of course, I'm going to be talking about such things because I'm a spiritual practitioner. All right. So this is my forte. And so um, there's a link there, of course. There's a link. There's a very, very strong link there. But that's another topic for another time. So um, now those superficial reasons there, you know, the person will basically be smooth talking you. And be giving you all sorts of, you know, things, just saying a whole lot of things there that just, you know, uh, it's like putting your wool over your eyes, right? And then you are not able to see the reality of the situation, you know, because your self-esteem is so low at that time that, you know, any nice compliment that you are getting from a man means everything to you. And so whatever reason that they're giving you as to why they're in a relationship with you, you buy into it. And so, yeah. Number, sign number two is that the relationship is based on superficial reasons. What it is that you can give this person, what it is, how you make them look, what it is that they can get from you. Maybe they can get money from you. Maybe they can, because they do that, you know, toxic men will be in a relationship with a woman only to use her for, for her finances, for social status, for sex, for, um, you know, to make themselves feel good and of course to boost their egos and to get narcissistic supply of course you know to give them a sense of self you know to give to make them feel alive okay so um those are the real reasons why a toxic person will be getting into a relationship with you um and so number three signs of a toxic relationship a toxic relationship bypasses all necessary processes that are part of a healthy relationship. All right. You know, some, for example, you know, one of the things that uh, Denea Jackson mentioned is the fact that uh, Derek Jackson never mentioned anything about them being in a relationship. He was just so doting on her and, you know, telling her, where have you been all my life and all sorts of things like that. But they never said anything about being in a relationship. You know, for a long time, they were all lovey-dovey with each other, but there was no nothing about a relationship, you know, about exclusivity and all of that. And I'm sure, you know, that's also one of the uh, phases that brought her into a point where she began to develop some insecurities, wanting to understand where she stands with this man. Because here's the thing, a toxic person will put you in a situation where you don't feel settled in your relationship. Even if maybe they did eventually admit or confess to you and or say to you that, oh, you know, we are exclusive, we are in a committed relationship and so forth. Majority of the time, a, a, a toxic person will not create an environment where you will feel like this is a safe, solid, steady relationship, right? Um, and will, you know, uh, touch on that as we go along, how that works. All right. But um, there are no necessary conversations about values. You know, like before a relationship starts, people have to sit down and have very lengthy conversations about what is it that they want in a relationship, what their vision is about a relationship, what a, an ideal relationship looks like for each of them and how they can merge those two visions together, if that's possible. You know, in a toxic relationship, none of those things happen none of those things take place people just jump into the relationship and then they figure things out along the way they never even get to know each other they literally only get to know each other long into the relationship and many a times you know once the relationship has established some kind of momentum the woman is the one that's left now you know with uh, their jaw dropped you know because they are discovering all sorts of things about their partner that they didn't realize they were signing themselves up for. Boundaries, boundaries. Now, a toxic relationship, here we're still on point number three, right? 
uh, on sign number three. Uh, in a toxic relationship, boundaries are not respected. They are not, um, you know, honored. They are not upheld. Okay, actually, boundaries are the one thing that destroy a toxic relationship. Because uh, your toxic partner will not want you to have any boundaries, will not, you know, want you to have anything that has to do with you creating anything that is a, a life that is fulfilling for yourself. You know, the, your toxic partner will not want you to be a self-generating force, a healthy self-generating force, because you becoming a healthy self-generating force will become a mirror reflection to them about their own inadequacies. And that's a problem. So in a toxic relationship, there cannot be any healthy boundaries. All right. Because a toxic relationship is a sham, is a scam, is a facade. So it is a house of cards. So the minute you bring any element of health into that relationship, you are destroying it because it is founded in toxicity. All right. So now let's look at... Um, Sign number four, the relationship becomes sexual very quickly. Okay, so, um, I mean, of course, the physical att attraction is very, very intense because of this false connection that the toxic person uh, creates. Okay, so this uh, false uh, connection, and of course, not only is the person creating the false connection, but they are constantly violating your boundaries in very, very subtle ways. You know, here we're talking about physical boundaries. The person is touching you. You know, the person is getting inappropriately close to you before time, before the right time, you know, before getting to know you. You know, I mean, you guys are on a first date and the person is already, you know, holding your hand, touching you, trying to kiss you and, you know, just violating your physical boundaries. All right. And many a times these things happen so subtly that you will be excusing them, not realizing that this person is actually um, testing the waters to see how far they can go with you. All right. So, um, there's also pressure that, you know, the toxic person puts on you to sleep with them. And if you, for example, tell them, no, I won't be sleeping with you, you know, within the first maybe two to three months of us getting to know each other. I can tell, you know, a toxic person will violate that boundary. They will do everything in their power to try and violate that boundary, you know, to try and get you to eventually succumb. They will put so much pressure on you, you know, by spending so much time with you, overwhelming you with attention, over exhausting you into submission. That's what a toxic person will do. All right. And this is a red flag, of course. But I mean, if you are still wounded in some areas of your life and you are still learning some lessons, then, of course, you miss these red flags. OK, number five, uh, signs of a toxic relationship. It is conflict ridden and the conflicts ensue very, very quickly in the relationship. OK, and here we're talking about unresolvable, never ending problems. All right, unresolvable, never-ending problem. Here's the, a toxic person cannot be happy. So a toxic person always has some reason why they are pissed at you or someone, but they are never happy on their own. All right, they, they just cannot be happy. The relationship can never ever reach that stage where it's like everything is stable, you know, because there are phases to a relationship there's the honeymoon phase where you are still getting to know each other and of course you see each other through rose-colored glasses and then there's that phase where things then begin to simmer down and then you are on autopilot of autopilot of some sort right now in a toxic relationship that doesn't happen you never get to that point where you feel settled and relaxed no Every time you begin to rest in your relationship and begin to trust that your man is going to be faithful, no, they, there's another woman that they are cheating on you with. All right. And somehow a toxic man will always find a way of making sure that you find out that they are cheating on you. I don't know what is it about toxic people, but they need to somehow make you aware that, you know, they're cheating. Why? Because this person is not happy. And so they don't want you to be happy in the relationship. They don't want you to be comfortable, you know, and very confident in their love for you. They don't want you to do that. They will want you to know that they are cheating on you. They will want you to know that there's competition out there. They will want you to know that your position in their life is under threat. 
okay so and so there'll always be some kind of conflict there'll always be something that pops up they're either comparing you to other people or they are you know just bringing in non nonsensical fights all right just every week there's there's something that you guys are fighting about all right every week there's a new fight you know if you rest for a little bit you know that before the end of the month in a toxic relationship a month is too long for there not to be any fight a month is way too long for there not to be any you will fight about something because a toxic person cannot maintain a healthy peaceful loving safe secure relationship that is way above them that is too much of a tall order for them all right and so they will definitely want to rub all their misery on you as their partner okay um and you will become drained of course you know trying to create peace and harmony and you know trying to get the relationship into a state of stability you know you will twist yourself into a pretzel trying to make sure that you know i mean the, the most interesting thing that i heard Dan um danea jackson say is the fact that she used to watch the videos of Derek jackson sleeping with other women okay and then she would try to do whatever it is that those women were doing uh whenever it is that she was sleeping with Derek jackson you understand so those kind of things you will twist yourself into a pretzel because every time you realize that your partner is either cheating on you or your partner there's some issue something happening with some woman out there whatever you'll be trying to do something to one up that woman you'll be trying to do something to try and either you know make yourself maybe look a little bit better or look like her or you'll be in some kind of strange competition you will be working over time working over time trying to create to maintain some kind of stability some kind of a facade or a fantasy of a healthy relationship that does not exist okay and so that's what ended up happening there with danea jackson i mean she would do her hair she would do her clothes she would do those sexual things she will do the things just so that she could align herself to whatever it is that she thought Derek was looking for but what Derek was looking for she could never provide because no human being can provide you cannot make another human being happy a miserable person is a miserable person you cannot make a miserable person happy you cannot happiness is an inside job all right so those are the things that happen there in a toxic relationship that's number five right it is conflict ridden you will fight about everything a fly will cross from one side of the room to another you will be fighting about it because a toxic person does not want peace and certainly not for a prolonged period of time okay and you as the person that wants peace that's that wants the love and everything you will be so unhappy there because you will you will note that you you are in a relationship but you are not really in a relationship you are in i mean you could be committed you could be married heck uh Danea jackson was married to this man for a few years and they were in a committed relationship for a very long time which she now calls a situation ship but that whole thing that you are in there you will be feeling like you're alone you have someone in your life you they will be sitting here right next to you but you will be feeling like you're alone because you will know that this person you will just know it in your heart that this person somehow is not able to take your best interest into consideration they are not able to take your best interest into heart all right because this person does not care about your dignity does not care about your well-being does not care about your health does not care about how any of their toxicity is affecting you all right so you'll be feeling alone You'll be feeling they'll be saying they love you the whole time and those words you will be clinging to them but in your heart of hearts you will know that this thing that you are in is nothing but a fantasy all right that's a toxic relationship sign number five number six it isolates you a toxic a toxic person will always create some kind of a triangulation situation and strange things like that all right one of the things that Danielle jackson mentions here is that Derek Jackson decided to, you know, not like her mom. And so now her relationship with her mom almost took a little bit of a strain as a result of her relationship with Derek. Um and but 
it's not just with those type of situations where it's like you know almost and you know it's the mom no a toxic person will make sure that you are isolated you don't have any other relationship with other people around you all right they always want to make sure that they have you all to themselves because when you see them in the context of relating with other people you'll be able to see that you know um this person is actually toxic this is how this person carries themselves and so on and so forth you understand and so they do not want that they want to make sure the only people that a toxic person will want you to hang around with are the people that will support and perpetuate their toxicity anyone that will that is able to call out the toxic person or that sees the toxic person for who they are the toxic person does not want you to hang around that person the toxic person does not want to be around that person all right so majority of and of course the toxic person being mostly narcissistic wants a whole lot of attention to themselves so they don't like it when you are around other people as well most of the time they want to have you all to themselves because they want your energy they want your attention all to themselves they want your life to be dedicated to them their joy their happiness not yours not anyone else's all right and so you will feel, you'll be isolated in that relationship okay you'll be so isolated because another thing that isolates your you know when it comes to a toxic relationship is the fact that you know there'll be so many problems in the relationship that you are now even embarrassed to talk to your friends or people that, that you love you know people in your life about what you are dealing with in that relationship you know because by now you are of course addicted to the person you can't leave them and they are very abusive towards you and you know you can't tell other people because they are going to tell you leave and you know you can't leave because you are attached you are addicted you are stuck in that situation so now because you can't tell people the truth about what you are dealing with in this relationship you find yourself a little bit isolated you understand now when you talk to your people you have to lie and then you know pretend everything is okay when it's far from that okay um let's see what notes have i made with regards to the isolation so the relationship of course consumes too much of your time that's another thing that isolates you and um, you will spend hours and hours and hours and hours of your time you know trying to figure things out trying to think about this thing ruminating on it you know all the traumas and all the things that are happening there and just you know not trying to make sense of all the nonsensical things that are happening in a relationship you understand you know there are certain things that toxic people will do that are so traumatic you will find yourself you know spending quite a bit of your time trying to figure out how is it possible that a human being can do that to another human being you know because many a times we are used to um people who are truly evil as those people maybe that you will come across on the street who will be maybe robbing you or doing all sorts of things like that but someone that you are in a relationship with is not someone that you would typically suspect to be you know um the devil in disguise right you will not suspect that person and the things that they will do to you they will be so jaw dropping you will spend a lot of time trying to figure out how is this possible that this person that says they love me could do this to me all right and that isolates you of course that will definitely isolate you because you know you you have to spend time trying to figure yourself out so between figuring out you trying to make sense of nonsensical things in the relationship and you know trying to also appease this unpeasable person in the relationship you are isolated all right that's what a toxic relationship does that's sign number 6 of a toxic relationship number 7 it feels like an accomplishment now this is that part where denea jackson you know speaks about the fact that um you know, derek jackson proposed in the most extravagant way of course even had her mom involved in the proposal as well and there were a whole lot of things basically it was a proposal to reckon with right and so now after all the cheating that he has been doing because of course you know derek jackson's cheating has been all over instagram all over social media and everything and uh, you know you can imagine the hell 
that Danea had been going through with regards to all of that. So now um, uh, Derek finally decides to marry her and, you know, he's proposing and everything. What is Danea thinking at that time? She's not thinking, oh my gosh, what am I getting myself into? No, she's thinking, yep, I got him. I got, y'all bitches ain't gonna take my man from me, all right? I got him. I got him. I'm the one that gets to marry him. Y'all want him, but y'all better know, y'all better recognize that it's me that he is marrying. All right. So that's what happens when, you know, we are still healing, when we are not yet integrated, where we are not yet clear about who we are. Then, you know, we, we see the fact that we have been able to keep a toxic man as an accomplishment. All right. You know, you think that you've, you, this is an accomplishment. You think that, yeah, of all the women, he chose me. And what you're not realizing is that, no, the reason why he chose you is because you are the one that he can control. You are the one that he is able to get away with all these things with, and you still stick around. That's why he's staying with you. You understand. There's nothing that, 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 that is an accomplishment that has to do with that because a, tox a toxic person is not an accomplishment. You are signing yourself up for abuse. That's all you are doing. So how is that an accomplishment? You, you don't see it that way when you are still wounded because there's nothing to celebrate about catching the attention and the affection, if you can call it an affection, because, I mean, that's just you know, a word that's being used loosely in this particular context here, you know, getting that so-called commitment in terms of a marriage of a toxic man, you understand, it's not an accomplishment, it's actually you signing yourself up for pain, that's what it is, okay, so she found, she found herself feeling like, oh my word, you know, I've, I've got it, finally, you know, this is an accomplishment, after fighting for all these years with these women that he's been cheating on me with, I finally get the ring. Okay. Of course, that didn't change anything. She got the ring. They got married. They even had children. But he was still cheating. He still cheated and he still eventually left her high and dry after nine years of being together. Okay. So that whole thing of we've been together for five years, we've been together for 10 years. People have been together with toxic people for 30 years and they still get. And, you know, as part of my initiation, of course, uh, spirit has placed me of, in my I had my own personal experiences, but I've also witnessed many women. And so I've had the opportunity to witness many women. I remember one time where I was dealing with a woman. It, it was 30 years of marriage to a man who was toxic and abusive and just shredded her to pieces. And, you know, once again, this shredding of you into pieces, it's not an outward, I'm shredding you into pieces. It's a subtle one, an invisible one, where you will see that your self-esteem is being corroded. You're, you, you are literally dissolving. You are becoming a shell of yourself. But there, there's not a lot of, you know, outward things that are, you know, pointing to what is it that's causing that. All that you can witness is that you are having problems in your relationships, in your relationship, and chances are you are being blamed for the reasons why there are problems in, the, in that relationship. This woman was so, so distraught because after 30 years of building up a company for this man, doing everything for him, what happened? She left, he left her. He left her for a very, very young uh, person, the new um, trophy wife was you know, old enough to be this man's uh, children's girlfriend, that type of a situation. And so she was just struggling to get over that because 30 years, 30 years of your life, you would have given it to a toxic relationship because you are celebrating the fact that you accomplished it. You kept the man. That's what you are celebrating. You are celebrating the fact that you kept a toxic man. You kept a crocodile. You are celebrating that. The crocodile will do to you what a crocodile does. And 30 years later, you will be distraught because then you are thinking my whole life, you are thinking, you know, everything. I've given this man everything. I've given him children. I've given, I mean, I even often get calls from people who are telling me that this man has infected me with, uh, you know, this sexual diseases. 
you know, HIV, AIDS, and a whole lot of things like that. People get infected in these relationships. Okay. So, I mean, a, a toxic man is nothing to celebrate. You, you do not want to celebrate uh, securing a toxic man because the only reason why you will ever secure a toxic man is because there's still a wound in you that is not yet healed that this person is still taking advantage of. It's nothing to be, you know, proud of. Nothing whatsoever. All right. And of course, you know, you, you don't feel it at that time. You know, she didn't see it when she was walking down the aisle and dressed all beautifully and having her dream wedding. She wasn't seeing it. You know, she was seeing her dreams becoming a reality. But that was only a fantasy that she was living in. And sooner or later, reality calls us out. And so... um. You know, and another thing about, you know, why a toxic man feels like an accomplishment or a toxic relationship feels like an accomplishment is because the toxic person typically makes you feel like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, there's something about it. And it's subtle and it's unspoken, even though sometimes toxic people do say these things. Um, but a toxic uh, relationship somehow makes you feel so insignificant and so not good enough, so in inadequate, Right. And, and so insecure that you feel like, do I even have what it takes to keep a man? You know, because also that's one of the reasons why you, you, we end up in toxic relationships, right? We end up in toxic relationships because we are, we've got a whole lot of unhealed wounds. We don't know who we are. We are not clear about who we are. We think we are, but we don't. And then we have very weak boundaries as well, right? So there are a whole lot of things that are still not yet integrated within us and so we don't feel good enough of course and so we don't think we have what it takes to earn to get love because we think we have to get love to earn love and to do everything in our power to keep it right and so in a toxic relationship you, you feel like this is an accomplishment because it's like oh okay you know this is proof that i can keep a man you know if you are as long as the relationship remains so that's why you don't want the relationship to end because if the relationship ends you feel exposed, you know, all those wounds, all those things that are the reality of your situation. You feel like those things are getting exposed, of which they are getting exposed. That, um, and then, But then it's not really that you cannot keep a man because what's there to keep in a toxic man? It's more like, you know, you are just a human being. You are dealing with whatever it is that you are dealing with in life. And... Here, even if you are not healed, you can still meet a, 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 a good man. You can still be in a good relationship and you can you might find that you actually grow and heal together with that person. So basically the point here is that um, whether you are able to keep a man or not should never even be a question. All right, because these are just toxic things. Like, can you keep a man? It's not about keeping a man. It's about, you know, can you be happy? Can you be happy on your own? You know, can you create win-win solutions? And can you be a self-generating force? And then can you be supporting towards your partner? And then can you, you know, be receptive towards the same as well? You know, can you have your own standards and you maintain them? You know, it's it's more about those kind of things more so than can you keep a man. That that's a trap. That that's a trap. Can you keep a man? And you never hear such things with with men. Can you keep a woman? No, no. You never hear that in society. You always hear can you keep a man because the pressure always has to be on the woman, right? And so this is where we ignore the wounds of the toxic masculine man, and then we focus on the shortcomings of the divine feminine. All right. And th that's another video that is lined up as well. So, um, you know, you, you try to recover your self-esteem from a toxic relationship or through a toxic relationship. A toxic relationship is a disaster waiting to happen. That's what it is. It's a disaster waiting to happen. That's all. That's all. Um, and so you you enter into a toxic relationship because you don't have self-esteem and you are not aware when you do it of course you only realize that later in hindsight but you enter into a toxic relationship because your self-esteem is damaged somehow and so you are entering into this relationship with an unconscious hope to recover this self-esteem through the relationship and of course this relationship does not give you that 
the toxic relationship does not give you that self-esteem that you are looking for. What a toxic relationship does is that it further corrodes that self-esteem. All right. So that's what happened here with Danea. Now let's look at number eight. There's no healthy conflict resolution. Okay, we've, we've touched that. I don't know why is it that I'm, I'm mentioning this, this again. Let's see why this point is coming back here. The thing is this. Oh, the, this is a very important reason. Here it is. Um, I, I, I Toxic people solve a lot of problems with sex in a relationship right? So whenever it is that you, you fight and you've got a serious problem with this person, instead of them sitting down and the two of you working out, how is it that this problem is going to be resolved? No, this person just wants you to make up with sex, all right? Sex always resolves everything. That's not a healthy way to resolve problems, okay? Or else, uh, problems, how they get resolved is that the two of you will get into it. You fight, you scream, you shout at each other, and then um, there's that silent treatment where it's like usually the toxic person will give you that silent treatment or they will walk out or they will say I don't want to do this right now let's not do this right now because you are irrational and then you they shut you down basically and then you shut down you shut up and then they, they don't come back to say let's come back and resolve that issue no when they come back they're going to act as if nothing happened all right they're going to pretend as if nothing happened or when if they decide to come back and apologize, they expect you to immediately forgive them right then, then and to pretend as if nothing has happened. All right. They are not prepared to give you the time that you need to, you know, make sense of what just happened and to heal and process everything. A toxic relationship does not allow that. Things operate in a very toxic way. You scream at each other, you fight, you get violent sometimes and then you quiet down for a little bit and then you pretend as if nothing happened okay and then of course the abusive partner always gets angry whenever it is that you call them out for their you know toxic behavior all right they get angry they throw tantrums they rage at you they you know diminish or demean you and they gaslight you and they deflect all right that's what happens see so this was important as a point number eight you see that's the difference between um this point number eight and point number five with regards to conflict so um and then now when a, a toxic person maybe decides to change maybe you tell them you know what i'm leaving you or it's like you you better change or else i'm leaving you maybe that's the ultimatum you are giving them the toxic person will change for five minutes hey eh? they will become a better person they'll be the best partner for that five minutes and then as soon as you come back and you decide okay now they've changed i forgive them and then you begin to settle and relax and feel comfortable in the relationship then the abuse starts again and this time around it's twice or 10 times more than how it was previously all right that's because you know you are dealing with a toxic person here this is not going to be a happily ever after situation this is not where you go into you disappear into the sunset with your knight in shining armor and then you know things become happily ever after unfortunately all right and it's said it's said for the divine feminine right because we've been programmed by this fairy tales and this toxic society that we've been living in to you know literally our whole entire lives we've been living for we you know with that hope with that dream of that happily ever after situation and here's the thing it's possible it's possible a happy relationship a health a, a happy healthy stable mutually beneficial fulfilling relationship is possible all right it's just not possible with a toxic person and it's also not possible if you yourself are not healthy within yourself if you've not healed whatever wounds whatever traumas whatever issues you've dealt with in life there's very little to no chance of you you know manifesting any healthy relationship or creating or generating a healthy relationship in your life and it's not because there's something wrong with you and it's also not your fault that you are enduring abuse or you are in a toxic relationship it's just life it's it's life and it can be unfair like that and number nine there is no real support or loyalty from your partner okay 
it's actually the other way around right of which this is why this is another video that i'm going to do that speaks to why narcissistic men are feminine in nature all right because what happens is that if you are you know that woman in a toxic relationship and you've got a toxic partner what happens is this toxic man expects you to take care of him in every way possible i mean it doesn't matter you could be working yourself okay you you will be working you'll be working nine to five sometimes seven to five right or seven to six or maybe you'll be working 24 hours a day you still need to clean you still need to cook you still need to wash up for after this person you still need to do a whole lot of things for this person and you need to bear those children and you need to make sure that everything is okay around the house and everything you cannot have any faults you and you'll be working and you'll be holding the whole situation down maybe you're the one that's paying the rent or maybe you're the one that owns the house the car and everything that the two of you have and you are still expected to do everything else okay because if, here's the thing maybe you bring a household helper into the house this toxic man of yours will be busy flirting with the help or maybe they'll be sleeping with the help or they'll be cheating with the help right that's how a toxic relation no loyalty you will be the one that will be loyal to them supporting them pushing their dreams you will be making sure that they are okay you'll be focusing on their best interest and everything they are not going to be returning you that favor you will be invested in their image you know just like how denea jackson here was you know always willing to make sure that you know if we need to polish up the image i'm here we do that you know video to apologize to everyone and all sorts of things like that you'll be there you'll be doing that you'll be cleaning up after him and i know i've been there i've got my own t-shirt and maybe a few of them You'll be cleaning up after this person, making sure that their image is polished, making sure that they appear as this respectable person in society. And what you don't realize is that what you are doing is you are basically contributing towards to toxicity. You are playing a part in hiding a snake, basically hiding uh, a monster, right? Because you are embellishing this monster with your presence in their life and your commitment towards them. They, because of you, they appear to be stable they appear to be a decent human being when they couldn't be further from that you understand so um you are loyal in that regard right because you're a good person you are loyal to them you are making sure that they appear good you are making sure that everything that has to do with them is good their dignity remains intact the question is are they doing the same thing for you are they returning the favor and if you're dealing with a toxic man it's likely that you are not chances are you are not that favor is not being returned to you your dignity is not being preserved all right your there's no loyalty to you because the person is not being faithful to you show me a toxic man and i'll show you a man who's unfaithful to their partner not everyone who cheats on their partner is necessarily toxic or a, a, a dark personality but majority of men who cheat on their partner are toxic and narcissistic all right and so you you are doing all these wonderful things being the good samaritan that you are your partner is dragging you through the, the mud that's what they are doing they are literally just they're not being loyal to you and you know or there's no one who knows heartbreak like a woman who gets cheated on like you are dying in a relationship <laughs> this is what dania was saying right that you know it's like you are literally falling apart in this relationship like you it, it's tearing you into pieces whilst everything you know at the surface level everything looks intact but you are literally being torn shredded to pieces because you are being loyal to someone who is not being loyal to you and then of course then you might find yourself in a situation where you get so broken to a point where you decide you know what have this ish I'm going to cheat on this person and you maybe cheat on the person it still backfires on you because all of this mess that you're really dealing with it's nothing that any normal human being is cut out for all right so there's no loyalty there no support no loyalty your toxic partner is not going to support your career pursuits they're not going to support you to be the best version of yourself that you can ever be they're not interested in that because it has to be about them 
about their dreams, about their goals. They might be saying that this is for all of the both of us and everything. But the reality is that if it was for the both of you, then they would understand that you too have your own dreams and visions and goals that you need to pursue. The person is not going to be interested about your life, about things that are important to you, things that matter to you. They will just be interested in themselves and making sure that you get to feed into that. No loyalty, no support in a toxic relationship. That's sign number nine. Number 10. Whew, soul ties and karma. You get so attached to this person, so you know, addicted to them that it's literally, um, it's not different from an addiction to a drug, right? And I think even, you know, mental health practitioners um, confirm that as well. When you are in a toxic relationship, the love that you have for this person is not a normal kind of love because it's the kind of love where it, it feels like you would die if this person is not in your life. That's why you are willing to do all sorts of things for them that they would never do for you. That's why, I mean, literally you could fight people. I mean, you, we've all seen those situations where women would be out in the streets pulling each other's wigs out, right? For a man. Some no good uh, human being, just piece of crap that basically should be shredded and thrown into the bin. Women would be fighting for this person because when women are not healed and integrated and clear about who they are, they are willing to lower themselves to the most, I mean, lowest of levels to just, you know, keep this relationship. Why? Because you become addicted. Remember that love bombing situation? You were initiated into that addiction, into that love addiction. So now you are addicted to this person you can't leave them. You cannot even consider any possibility of you existing without this person. This person has become your source of everything. They are your source of joy, your source of peace, your source of self-esteem, your source of connection to life, your source of everything. All right. That's what it is when you are dealing with a toxic relationship. This is a soul tie. And that's why even if you try and leave the person and then you break up with them, it will take you a few months, if not years, to eventually get over the trauma of the relationship and to get over the person, to eventually get to a point where it's like, you know what, mm, I forgot about him. He doesn't exist anymore. He's not important to me and so forth. There are strong soul ties. It's like You want this person. They feel like this must be my soulmate. That's how it feels. It's like, this must be my everything. No, it's that love bombing thing that you uh, endured. It's it's a trauma bond. Okay, that's the, it, it's a trauma. You are bound to this person through the trauma that you've experienced that you are not even aware that you're experiencing in the beginning of the relationship. And then um, now everything feels like this is the person that you're supposed to be with. You know, and you whoa whoa to anyone who dare tries to convince you otherwise all right that's when you know if your friend tries to tell you mm, this is concerning that's when that relation that friendship ends right you are willing to let go of that friendship because you, this is your everything here this is your boo here this toxic human being Okay, and then, of course, the, the connection between you and this person is so strong, it's spiritual. Here's the thing. I've, I've spoken to many, many women who have, um, you know, shared with me how that this, the toxic person that they are in a relationship with, they had received prophecies about this person before the person came into their lives. And those prophecies were saying that this is your soulmate. Okay, this is your soulmate. I myself have experienced the same thing as well. All right, those situations where um, everything about a person says, this is your soulmate. You know, the, there are synchronicities, there are signs and wonders and all sorts of things like that that are confirming that this is your soulmate. But everything about reality says, nah, nah. If this is a soulmate, this is a not now situation kind of a thing. All right, so... 
you don't want to go by signs and synchronicities and all sorts of spiritual things like that, even though the connection between you and this person spiritually is so strong. You don't want to be going on there. You want to go on reality. What are you experiencing in your everyday life within the context of this relationship? How confident are you about the connection that you have with this person? How safe do you feel, you know, in this relationship with regards to your best interest? And we're not talking about that five minutes when this person is trying to prove whatever point. We're talking about in a long-term um, context, you know, in, for a prolonged period of time. Do you feel safe? Do you feel settled? Do you feel, you know, confident in the security of this relationship? All right. Um, so, and then, you know, the karma element speaks to the fact that, of course, you know, a toxic relationship is not here to give you the happily ever after situation. It's only here to show you certain things that have not yet been integrated within you, certain wounds that have not yet been healed, that this toxic person, of course, has identified way in the beginning of the relationship. And they are literally just throwing salt into them, just rubbing on those wounds, that's just cutting them open from time, ripping them open from time to time. Those are those wounds that this relationship is here to show you about so that you can then begin to focus on them to heal and integrate them. All right. So that's that karma. It's the karma that has to do with, you know, um, things that have happened in your past that are yet to be healed and integrated. Number 11. So a toxic relationship twists the meaning of everything that is healthy. Now, when it comes to Danae's interview, the funny thing that kept happening there is the fact that, you know, every time um, the interviewer kept asking her a question about, uh, uh, for example, the relationship, she will say, define a relationship, you know. Um, so basically, she kept saying, define a whole lot of things, define exclusivity, define commitment, define this, define that, you understand. And that's because in a toxic relationship, the true meaning of everything gets twisted upside down. You know, that's why I need to do this video that speaks to, you know, our toxic cultures and everything. Because, you know, in a toxic culture, you'll hear things like, Munna kesilebe. you know, that means a man gets to cheat. You know, a man gets to sleep with any dress, any skirt that he comes across, and that's okay. All right. So that's what happens in a toxic culture. You understand? So that's, and also a, a toxic man will say something like that as well, because they need to twist your psychology into that situation where you are okay with toxicity because you know a toxic relationship cannot sustain itself if you don't buy into the toxicity and think it's normal you understand so it needs to twist everything upside down so it's gonna be like you know commitment is not commitment in a toxic relationship you know you have to you know go by the fact that okay maybe this person keeps coming back to me that means he's committed to me no is he faithful to you because you know, part of commitment is being faithful. If this person cannot be faithful to you, is he really committed to you? Do they treat you with respect? Do they honor you? Do they honor who you are? Do they know you? Do they really know you and support you for who you are? It, those are the things that, you know, so you don't, you don't get that in a toxic relationship because you know, it will be that, you no. Know, for example, commitment is the fact that, you know, the person is still coming back. It's not the fact that the person is literally doing everything that has to do with commitment. You understand? And then there'll be that thing where, you know, um, conflict resolution, you know, that gets twisted upside down. It's going to be, I apologized. So why are you still angry? Because I apologized. Why are you still angry? Why are you still angry after I apologize? You know, because conflict resolution in a toxic relationship is a distorted version of what conflict resolution is. So simply because a person apologized, that means you're supposed to be feeling better already. Okay. And then also because the person apologized, that means you must never ever bring the issue up again. Even if they keep repeating it, you cannot say to them, why do you keep repeating the same thing over again? Why do you keep, you know, cheating on me with this particular group of people? 
why do you keep doing this and this and that why is it that whenever it is that this and this and that happen you keep doing this and this and that the toxic partner will say to you but i apologize for that you see why do you keep doing that that's twisting the narrative of what it means to resolve conflict so now you will find yourself being in a situation whereby now you no longer resolve conflict the way that a healthy you know situation uh, allows for conflicts to be resolved no now you'll be resolving conflicts according to how this person wants you to resolve conflict this toxic person that you are dealing with all right because in a toxic situation everything gets twisted upside down okay that's why in a toxic situation you'll be the woman you'll be paying the bills and you'll be uh you know doing everything else so basically you'll be picking up the slack for this man of yours who will just be a nice little child that you are taking care of like a mother all right that's what happens in a toxic relationship because commitment is not commitment in a toxic relationship. commitment is only commitment to you to them they are not committed to you you know the only way that this commitment gets to continue that it's as long as you are maintaining it they are not interested in maintaining that commitment because they are toxic cheating is not cheating right you know <laughs> because you'll be i don't know if this is what Danaya jackson said or if i heard it somewhere else but you know a toxic man will be saying no but it's not cheating because we only kissed no it's not cheating because we were only flirting it's not cheating because we are only flirting. It was only an, an emotional affair. So it's not cheating. You know, or no, it was not sex because, you know, they, it was only oral. So it was not sex, you know, because they, they, they did this and that on me. So it wasn't sex because sex is not sex in a toxic relationship. Cheating is not cheating in a toxic relationship. Friendship is not friendship in a toxic relationship. Friendship is something else. You know, the toxic person will be saying, no, we are just friends. And this will be the friend that they will be touching in appropriate ways, you know, having very inappropriate uh, relations and interactions with this person, you know, and then they just keep saying to you, no, but it's just a friend because in a toxic situation, everything is twisted upside down. All right. So um, let's look at the last one. In a toxic relationship, this is point number 12, sign number 12, right? 12 signs of a toxic relationship. Distortion of polarities. Okay. Distortion of polarities. So in a toxic relationship, that's where you hear the man who says, it's 2023, you can't expect me to do the same things that, I, that people used to do in the dark ages or in primitive times and all of that. And by this, what this man is actually saying to you is that I'm expecting you to take care of me financially or I'm expecting you to be the one that pursues me. Don't expect me to be the one that's calling you, okay? I expect you to be the one that calls me all the time. So basically, I'm expecting you to be the one that's pursuing me. I'm expecting you the one that's shooting your shot in this relationship. I'm expecting you to be the man in this relationship, okay? A distortion of polarities so in a toxic relationship the the woman always finds themselves in a position of a man they'll be fulfilling the role of a man for example the woman will be leading the relationship the woman will be the one who will be you know initiating dates you know quality time together doing very important things that have to do with the future of the relationship. The woman will be the one who will be concerned maybe about the finances, about a whole lot of things that have to do with the, the well-being of the relationship, right? So this toxic man will basically be wanting to push whatever agenda that they need to push for themselves in the context of the relationship and not necessarily uh, the, an agenda that is really mutually beneficial. Okay, and so in as a result of that, you will find yourself as the woman stepping into that uh, uh, role of a man and then the man becoming the woman. So you are the one that's chasing him. You are the one that's doing all these things for him. You are the one that's just giving out. You are the one that's doing, doing, doing the things, doing the most for the relationship. And the man is just laid back, relaxed, sitting there, chilling most of the time not even appreciating everything that you are putting into the relationship you are getting worn out you are getting exhausted you are getting drained 
from you know all these things because you are not in the polarity that you are meant to occupy as the woman because as the woman you are the passive principle but now this toxic man of yours has turned passive themselves and you have turned into the aggressive principle which is the masculine principle and then you wonder why is it that you are anxious you wonder why is it that you are unhappy why you are insecure why is it that you cannot have any peace within yourself it's because you've stepped into the role of the masculine and you're not even aware because this guy has convinced you that it is primitive to have standards that you place upon him it is primitive for you to expect him to be the one that is pursuing in the relationship to be the one that is leading and guiding in the relationship to be the one that is initiating a whole lot of things that need to be initiated within the relationship to be the one that leads the vision of the relationship you know the one that is taking responsibility for provision for you know um, a whole lot of things it's it's provision it's for it's guidance it's protection it's a whole it's a whole lot of things that a man needs to be responsible for in a relationship but you'll be the one that's doing all of that you'll be the one doing that because your toxic person has you know uh, psychologized you tricked you manipulated you into that by making you feel some strange way by having those kind of demands placed on him you know, a toxic person will always, always diminish any boundary that you try to set up. They will always try and deflect. They'll always try and just basically throw away and just turn into nothing. Any principle, any standard, any boundary that you try to set up in a relationship. All right. Because you are dealing with a toxic person here. They're not interested in anything good. All they're interested in is toxicity, chaos, drama. That's all because that's where they thrive. That's what gives them life. As long as you are insecure about the next woman, they are happy. They want you insecure. They want you to feel insecure. Okay. They, they do not want you to be settled. They don't want you to feel confident. They don't want you to feel secure. Okay. And they certainly don't want you to feel feminine. Okay. They want you to be the man. They want you to be, you know, derailed psychologically. They want you to be out of your element. They want you to be out of your wits. All right. A toxic person can, does not believe in the health of their partner because if their partner is healthy, then, you know, it's highly likely that the, that person is going to leave them. So they need to have a partner that is broken. And if you're not broken or if there's a little bit of health in you, they will break you down to make sure that you have no ability whatsoever to escape the relationship. All right. They will make sure that you are so broken down that your only source of anything in life is them. That's where they want you, because in that way, then they can abuse you as much as they want to abuse you. And then you will have no recourse and you will have no escape. Why do they want to abuse you? Because this is someone who has rejected themselves. This is someone who inherently hates themselves right in the back mind, in the back corners of their own psyche. They hate and reject themselves. And so they have to hate and reject you. They cannot love, they, they don't love themselves. So they can't love you. That's why they reject their own healing. And they reject it in this way by seeing themselves as perfect. They don't see anything wrong with them. Every healthy human being knows that everyone has some kind of wound that they would have sustained by virtue of being in this world. And that wound may need to be healed for them to live healthy lives. A toxic person does not think that way. They do not see themselves that way. In fact, they mock and scoff at such kind of things that have to do with, you know, self-help or, you know, mental health and all sorts of things like that. And oh, even spirituality, right? They scoff at such things. They, they ridicule them because to them, any, if they can acknowledge any of those things, that means they have to acknowledge things that need to be healed within themselves and they're not prepared to take things that direction. They would rather point out to a whole lot of people out there to say they are the ones that are sick, they are the ones that are wounded, they are the ones that need to get help, but they will never acknowledge the help that they themselves need. And here's the thing, majority of the time when you're dealing with a healthy person, they don't have time to be busy, you know, pointing fingers at you to say you need help when you are trying to resolve a conflict. 
you understand a healthy person will be open to self-reflection and to be you know questioning a few things about themselves in a context of a relationship and conflict resolution but a toxic person does not want to consider that a problem to a toxic person is not a problem like how it is to a healthy person to a toxic person it's like even if the same problem keeps persisting many many years you know for many years the same problem keeps persisting a toxic person is not willing to look at that pattern to say but you know what this is actually the same thing that keeps repeating itself over and over again maybe this needs to be looked into and maybe this needs to be addressed because it's clearly you know detrimental towards the relationship a toxic person is not going to look at things from that perspective a toxic person will literally be looking at every fight that you're having even if it's the same thing that you've been fighting for for five years they'll be still looking at that problem and saying, you know, it's an isolated incident. Why are you bringing things of the past into this situation? Why are you bringing things that don't even have to do with this into this situation? And yet they do have everything to do with it. You understand? But the toxic person does not want to look at that because that means they need to then begin to look at themselves as to why they behave the way that they behave. And then they need to start changing themselves. You know, they, they need to start working on themselves and becoming better. A toxic person does not want that. A toxic person is the typical queen of hearts. That's why I say toxic men and narcissistic men are very feminine because they are your biggest drama queens in the world. No one throws a tantrum like a toxic man. So they, they are like the queen of hearts like that, right? For them, any time you hold them to account, it's off with their heads. You know, anytime you try and, you know, confront them about anything, off with their heads, you know, off with her head, off with her head. Anytime you try and, you know, get anything that is meant to be healthy within a relationship context from a toxic person, all you will get is drama, the queen of hearts. Yeah, in a toxic relationship, many lines are blurred. Expectations and standards will always be watered down. You know, your 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 expectations and your standards will be watered down. You will they will be managed so that you basically expect the the bare minimum from this person. And even that bare minimum that you will get from this person, they will still flunk it. They will still just, you know, be terrible at it they will still not be doing the right thing by you, all right? Um, that's because this person has no intention of, you know, uh, doing anything right because they failed themselves in the first place. How are they going to do right by you? you know, that They failed themselves when they decided that they are never, ever going to be reflective about themselves, about who they are. So whilst you might be wounded and might be having issues, but you are still at least for yourself and for life because you still are open to self-reflection, accountability and, you know, introspection and a whole lot of things like that. Not so a toxic person. Yeah, in a toxic relationship with those distortion of polarities, you know, the woman becomes the man and you will provide, you will chase, you will pursue, you will fight. You will think a lot, you will plan things, you will care more, you will give more, you will do everything whilst the man is on the receiving end of all of those things. And the minute you stop, that's when you will see that entitlement. All right. You are the one that's calling the person every day. Just try and stopping. Just try stopping the calls. Just stop calling the person and see what happens. They'll, they'll throw tantrums. They might decide to cheat on you and say, you know, you stopped calling me, so I thought you didn't care. You understand. You are not dealing with a man there. You are dealing with a woman in the body of a man. All right. And it's very sad to say that. Very, very sad because this is the reality with a lot of men in our society. I hope this information is enough to help you to see if any of these signs are relevant to you. And here's the thing. If you are dealing with just half of these signs that I've just mentioned here, chances are you are in a toxic relationship. Okay, and I hope you will get the necessary help that you need to be able to exit such a, a relationship because I understand that 
toxic relationships are addictive abusive relationships are addictive and they destroy you to an extent whereby you lose the capacity to even think about your life outside of the relationship and so you become stuck in that relationship but i hope you will get the help that you need to be able to exit the relationship to be empowered and to begin to generate healthier relationships for yourself and um, if you would like any assistance from me my contact details are in the description link uh, in the description box you are welcome to get in touch with me and then you know if, if you pass the vetting process then we'll see if we can uh, work with each other wish you all the best and thank you so much for spending time with me on this transmission soul tribe soul family remember consciousness is the new frontier namaste